We will continue ministering on freedom from sickness comes from knowing the truth. But remember now, knowledge is nothing unless it's what? Acted upon. So we don't just want to have the knowledge. We want to act upon that knowledge. We found out in John 8, 32, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you to my disciples and you shall know the truth and that truth shall make you free. Where the freedom comes in is that you act on the knowledge of the truth. You are in obedience to the word of God. Come with me to Romans, the 10th chapter. Freedom from sickness comes from knowing the truth, and that truth must be acted upon. You have to have the knowledge. The knowledge will cause you to get rid of all unbelief, all uncertainty as to the matter of whether it's God's will to heal you or whether it's God's will to prosper you. We're going to look at an instance where in Romans 10 and 16, it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. First of all, you cannot receive anything unless you operate in God's faith. Notice it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. The gospel has been, I believe it has been universally preached. We go on YouTube and find out that we have people listening to us in Australia, Africa, Saudi Arabia, other places. So the gospel has been universally preached, but it has not been universally obeyed. See, the Lord is endeavoring to bring all his people into one, into obedience to his words. In that way, he can manifest himself throughout his whole body. So what did he do? He chose people out for himself and set them apart. We talking about in his body. He's, and God set some in the church. They have particular members. But he's chosen out a particular group of people for himself. He said, for they have not all obeyed the gospel. Remember now, when you obey the word of God, you place yourself under the authority of the word. If you place yourself under the authority of the word, you can obey it. Because the word, the gospel of Christ is what? The power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. So you place yourself under the authority of the word. The power of God is there. Now, as I minister to you, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. As I minister to you, I am proclaiming, I am publishing, I am making a declaration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? That faith is in the source. God's faith is in the word of God. And as it's being ministered, the Holy Ghost produces the faith out of that word into your heart. The faith is built into God's word. As the word is proclaimed, preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. Can't leave the spirit. If it's not preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, it cannot work in you. It is only designed to work as the power of the Holy Spirit falls on it. That's the reason why it's so important to stay full of the word of God, so important to pray in tongues, fellowship with the Father, and obey his word. You got to understand, God set some in the church as it pleased him. Sister Lee can't call nobody. I can't call Brother Hester. I can't call Brother John. I can't call Sister Ruth. I can't call nobody. This is important. This has a lot to do with healing. People have a lot to do with your healing. Don't think they don't. Yes, they do. All right? Let's cover this. I'm going to go back to that part because this is important. Well, we start with 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be delivered from temporal evils of this day. Not just speaking about I receive Jesus as my Savior. When you call upon the name of the Lord... You put yourself in a position to be delivered from whatsoever. Because in verse 9 of the same chapter, For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is my healer. I'm confessing this with my mouth. He bore my sickness, carried my diseases, and by his stripes I'm healed. I'm confessing the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is, by my mouth. And then he goes on to say, And shall believe in his heart. 
Well, as I see it in my mouth and act on it, it's going to drop in my heart. So that's the reason why you just can't do something just one time and think it's work. If thou continue in my word, this is a everyday thing. If you want to be here, brother, this is feed. You eat dinner and breakfast and supper every day, don't you? Well, then, when it comes to healing and the power of God working in your life, you have to do this every day. What you did Monday, by the time Tuesday get here, is depleted. It's like your food. You cannot live by bread alone. You cannot be healed by medicine alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you can take the word of God for anything, joints, marrow, bones. He didn't say don't eat no food. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. Insinuate that physical body needs bread. Well, man shall not be healed by medicine alone. Because medicine can't heal you. But you can take that medicine, incorporate the word of God, and believe God's word. And let the Lord do the work. So we're not against doctors and we're not against medicine. And Sister Lee is bragging on her father. Only time I ever been to the doctor was to have Jack and Jojo. And next year I'll be 70 years old. Too bad I couldn't use that with the dentist. <laughs> and yeah, I still have all my teeth. But thank God for Dennis. Everybody is different. And the Lord works everybody differently. He manifests himself. He's God. He manifests himself according to your particular need. You don't have to do it like Sister Lee. That's why you need to know him for yourself. And so that's the reason why we minister the word. So everything I minister, whether I say healing or don't say healing, this pertains to your healing. This pertains to divine health and divine life. He says in verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So you see down here where it says, so then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, as the gospel is preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit produces faith in the gospel message and in the heart of the one that believes. What do I need to do? Have the word in your mouth. Have the word in your actions. If you have your mouth full of the word, you can't have it full of nothing else. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Every promise that God has is a revelation of who he is. You partake of the promise, you partaking of the divine nature. That promise is God telling you, I'm going to make it good for what I said. And as you partake of it, you partake of his nature. And every one of those promises, each is a revelation of what God will do for you. He can't wait to do it for you. Now, if it's a revelation, and it is, in that he will what? Reveal himself as the source, and he will fulfill that promise. He's talking about healing. So you have to have the knowledge. Then he says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they be sent? So see, all preachers are not sent. Well, if you pray for me, like I told you, Pastor Northern left here and he said how the church ought to be ordered. But Pastor Northern didn't call me. There is what is called the divine providence, the design of God. It's your design for me. I heard it in the song. God has a design. He has a time frame of what is being done here in this earth realm. The things that you go through, them trials and tests, where did it come from? When you have your own personal crisis or your trial and test, where did it come from? <laughs> where is it going to come from? All your trials and tests come from you, come out of you. But God is still where? In you. He know that. That's the reason why I kind of know John when I fall into different trials and tests. Why? Because I know it's working for me. Them trials and tests is beneficial for me. Some of them he didn't commission, but he allowed. You got to kind of like grow up. You got to come mature in the things of God and quit being a whiny baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the time. You got to grow up and handle things from seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because anything you can put your hands on, Smell, touch, and see can what? Dissipate just like that in front of your eyes. I call it what? Petty. If I can see it and touch it and talk about it, it's petty. It has no value, no worth. It can't save me. This still has to do with your healing. You got to know who you are and who you're listening to. What I'm ministering is how are you hearing it? 
I'm a minister of the word, but how are you hearing it? Because how you hear is what's going to be measured back to you. Now, how you hear is dependent upon your what? What's inside of you? What's inside of you? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet. Thank you, Lord, for my beautiful feet. Of them that preach the gospel of peace. Peace. The ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation, the message of reconciliation has been given to you to bring peace to other people. If you hostile and your whole disposition is always hostile, how can you preach the gospel to somebody? The Lord ain't in that because your what? Your insides ain't right. See, he always tend to the inside. Where does healing take place? From where? The inside. Just because the doctor, you know, cut this over and put that on and tell you to do that, healing don't take place from that. Healing take place from inside. That preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things of God. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Or who has believed or heard the doctrine that we are ministering from or the teaching? Okay, now where is this found? So I, this really has to do with healing, yeah. So Ruth preached the message on that. I can't remember the message, but I remember the title, Who Would Believe Our Report. That was over in Rosedale. Y'all don't think I'll be listening. Phyllis preached on, can these bones rise again? Well, you got bones in your body. So while she up here preaching, I'm sitting down there meditating on what she's saying. What do people have? Osteoporosis? Is that what it's called? Since I don't have it, I don't know how to pronounce it. So they're not a big thing. But some born with their bones. Lord, I want to thank you. My bones are alive in Jesus' name. The marrow, the joints. Now, she had that message up here. We was laughing at everything. If you know what the word say, you can put the word with anything. Jackie ministered on minister things faithful. Candace ministered on faithfulness of God. Yvette ministered on 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, the God kind of love. Even Kayvon got up here and ministered. When somebody get up here and minister, you're listening to what is said, not their personality of what they're doing, but what is the Spirit of God saying to me about what that person is saying? Because we both see everybody in the light of what Jesus did, not themselves. Because every man a think more highly of himself than he ought to, and every man think he is basically him without regard to the other person. So, oh, let's go over here to Isaiah 53. This is why I say it has to do with healing. You can have it to do with whatever you want it to have it do with. But we're going to keep it in the context. Look what it says, first verse. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? When you believe, Brother John said it this morning, do you trust him? That's all believing is, is trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. You not only trust in him, you rely on him. You cling to him. That's faith. Nobody else. That's your source. That's who you owe your loyalty to. That's who you owe your allegiance to. Worthy is the mighty king. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Worthy is the mighty king. I can depend on him any time of the day. And he might not come when I want him. But what? He, he's always on time. Now, this is who you want to trust. You don't want to put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in your wife or your husband, your mother, your children. Do not do that. Because we have a knack of believing people can meet our need. People can't meet your need. They might supply some of them, but they, <laughs> they cannot meet the need like the father can. Okay? So we're still speaking on healing. Who hath believed? In other words, when I hear... When I'm in my closet and I hear, and it's the word of God, I come in here and I, and I minister to you what I hear. I can't make you believe it. You know, I can't make you believe it. Now, everybody in here is different. Everybody have a different personality. Everybody brings the word forth differently. But it's still the what? The word. Who want to come up here and lead praise and worship? Raise your hand. Who want to lead prayer on Friday and Wednesday? Huh? I ain't saying you can't. God said some in the church. You read Isaiah 53. Remember now, when you read the word of God, read this one thing. 
There got some times when you read, you're going to have to meditate on what you read. The growth and the development comes out of the meditation. The reading helps you to acquire the knowledge. And when I'm reading something, the Holy Spirit uh, tell me to go such and such to give me a witness to another scripture. If you're just reading the word and you're not meditating it, meditating it means, oh, you know, my bill is due. Oh, Lord, where am I going to get the money from? You know, last month I had to do, you do oh. And you see, you ain't talking about it, you just saying, thinking about it and all that. You don't do the word that way. That's worry when you do that. But worry the word. Look in verse 3. He says, he is despised, talking about Jesus, and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faith from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Your heart should not be troubled. Remember now, the gospel of peace is being preached. Preaching on your healing brings peace to your body. Brings peace to your body. You don't want your body to be racked with pain and can't sleep and all that kind of stuff. And with his stripes, we are healed. So in your own time, you read and study Isaiah 53. We've gone over it before, but I want you to see the connection in who has believed our report, our message, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. It's revealed to those that believe. Faith has to be revealed to you. The Lord Jesus Christ has to be revealed to you. Every promise has to be revealed to you for you to what? Act upon it. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's go to Luke, the eighth chapter. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing what? The minister message as it is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the direct action on that word, and it gets right imparted. It has belief in it, and it gets imparted into your heart. Let's look at Luke 8 and 11. So my faith now, your freedom from sickness, from knowing what the word of God says, knowing the truth. Now, we're going to look at this seed again, because the word of God is the seed. And notice what is looking in verse 12, the first sentence. Those by the wayside are they that what? Hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I used to have the gospel on tape. And I listened to it because it said faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if faith is in God's word, I listen to it. I listen to it. I have always been like this. Just listen to it. Faith is being put in me as I listen to it. I'm hearing it. My spirit man is being fed. I ain't talking about these ears right here. Your spirit man being fed. Now look in verse 13. First sentence. They own the rock of they which what? When they hear. So now this is describing the spiritual ground in which the word is being sown in, which will cause you, look at verse 18, take heed therefore how you hear. Your disposition, your mental attitude will dictate how you hear the word of God. Verse 14, and they that fell among thorns are they which when they have heard. Verse 15, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart haven't heard the word. So see, I'm telling you this, it has to do with your inside, your spiritual anatomy to whether you're going to receive healing or not. Now, God has mercy. He said, whoever call on his name, he'll deliver them. Say you got somebody down and out, don't read their word, don't do nothing. And them fell down in a ditch on their last leg and know they go die in that ditch and they call on the Lord. What the Lord going to do? Have mercy on them, raise them up? Oh, but you reading the word. Oh, and you talking about how you love the Lord and you doing this and all that. And I wonder why I can't get healed. And he healed that one over there. Because you supposed to what? No. <laughs> you supposed to know. You supposed to have the knowledge. You supposed to be acting on the word of God. He didn't know nothing. Those who don't know get list strikes, <laughs> lip <Lit> whippings. <laughs> but if you know and you say you know, 
I don't even have to go to that scripture verse. Look at verse 21 of the same chapter, Luke 8. My mother and my brother are these which what? Hear the word of God and do it. So then faith coming by hearing, not having heard, coming by hearing. And hearing, the way you hear, go come by the word of God. The word of God is the only thing that can change your disposition and attitude. The word of God is the only thing that can cause you to hear. Can't nothing else. Sally Sue can't cause you to hear. CNN can't cause you to hear. Only God's word can cause you to hear God's voice. You listen to everything else, you'll never hear his voice. And where are we all going to end up? At the judgment seat. Everybody. So now we find out that God's faith comes out of a source. What is that source? It comes out of God's word. If it's God's faith, it's going to come out of his word. The word of God is powerless until you plant it. You can read it morning, noon, and night, but it has to be planted in your heart. It has to be planted in your mind, your spiritual mind. It has to be planted there where you think the word of God, you think to do. It drops in your heart. It is an expression of itself that comes up and out. You put healing in you every day? What do you think will happen? <laughs> healing. <laughs> God's word don't fail. You got to have a purpose and you got to be definite. You got to be continuous. You just got to bless God. I want this more than anything. Lord, you said if I seek you first and your kingdom, I got healing. If you seek it, let's go over here to Psalms 107. See, that guy ready to say that? See, that's how I like to minister. See, I'm over here to say something and I hear Psalms 107. Proverbs. Proverb a day keeps the devil away. You won't know that unless you read one a day. How about that? I throw one in there. <laughs> I throw that in there. <laughs> well, Sister Lee, I can keep the devil away anyway without reading the proverb. You got that right? You ain't got to read the proverb to keep the devil away. If you in Christ, the only way the enemy get to you is the Lord allow him to come to you or you done stepped out of that circle. So if you know you in Christ and the enemy comes, I don't care. Where are you? You in the palm of his hand. Now, who going to pluck you out of his hand if you in him? Nobody and nothing. That's the reason why you can count it all joy when you go through a trial or test. Because the Lord allowed the flood to come in my house. Why? So I can find the termites. <laughs> <laughs> and a blessing has taken place. He let me know the reason why. I get my windows. JoJo got a new car. It's new to him. See, the Lord will prosper you in the time of famine, but you got to step out. He wasn't going to get the car. He said, then he said, I got up here and I said, uh, what's wrong with a lot of you people? You trying to wait till you get something to make sure you can take care of it instead of just, I ain't going to do like I did. <laughs> I stepped out. Instead of stepping on out in the deep and got to depend on the Lord. But if you go worry about you don't have enough money and you can't pay that, don't step out. When you step out, you will have planted the word in that you know what the word of God said. You not only know it, but you done received it. And you go, what? Trust it. And ain't nobody going to move you. You can go anywhere you want with that. That's the only way the word of God can get planted. You got to have knowledge of it. You have to receive it and take it as your own personal possession that this word is mine. And I'm not going to let it go. I trust in it, Jesus. And then when it looked like you can't pay that, no, Lord. Uh-uh, I trust in you. You know the test going to come? It's going to come for what though? The word. Not because of what you have or don't have, but for the word's sake. And you're still holding on to the word. And it's trying to tell you still holding on. After a while, somebody got to let go and the word don't. The word does not let go. So you hold on to it. This is for your healing. This is for anything. But the word got to be planted. Knowledge of the word. Once you get the knowledge... Act upon it by receiving it. You only can receive it once you do it. You Doing it is a part of the receiving process. And then once you get it, you hold on to it. Don't let it go. Cling on to the Jesus. Jesus, I'm hold where I am, that's where you will be also. And you seated at the right hand. So now who going up there next to Jesus and go get you? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Nobody. Just saying this makes you feel good. But baby, if it ain't planted and you really don't believe this, 
You ain't never got up there yet. Oh, you can get up there and they pull you down. You get up there tomorrow and they keep pulling you down. This has to be more real to you than you sitting in that chair. God has a prescribed order, and his order is that you receive him, his word. You hold on to it come hell or high water. You don't let it go. Oh, Psalms, what, 107? See that? I told you. <laughs> Let's start with verse 17. It starts off with fools. So we already know what a fool is. A fool is someone that's self-confident. They're confident in what they can do it and how they can do it. Okay? A fool is someone that says there's no God with their speech and with their action. They don't come out and say, oh, I don't believe in God. There's no God. But the way they act and speak, they don't believe that there's a God. So a fool says, this is my job. I got this job. This is my money. Oh, you know, I can do whatever I want. This is my time. I can do this. But look what he says. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, are afflicted, are sick. The same attitude that you have concerning sin must be the same way about sickness. Sickness is of the devil. And you don't want Jesus to have come in contact with bearing that and you take it on. Being sick is not a sin. We have a body that's liable to death. You're down here in the sixth day. Stuff come to you. Well, sin comes to you. Stuff come to you. Get off me. <laughs> that's the only way I can tell it. <laughs> it come to find a home. No, you don't. You know, I ain't saying getting sick is a sin now. I'm just saying your attitude about sickness should be the same thing as it is about sin. So fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. So he's associating sin with sickness. Remember when Jesus said, thy sins are forgiven. It was a paraplegic person. He says, rise up and walk, thy sins are forgiven thee. And he says, who is able to forgive somebody's sin? Well, we all can forgive sin. You can forgive somebody for sinning against you. So a lot of times you, when it comes to healing, you got to go back and find out who you had ought against. You believe in law for healing and you got ought against somebody in your heart? Oh, no, no, no. You ain't going to get healed. You can't be getting into arguments with people and all that kind of stuff. Why? Because it's called the gospel of peace. And you want peace in your body and your spirit and your soul too. The next verse, their soul abhorred Talking about that fool, all manners of meat. They don't want to hear the word. All manners of meat. So we only meat we're looking at is the word of God being meat. And they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. That was that fool I was talking about in that ditch. And he saved them out of their distresses. Look what it says in verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. In hearing the word when God says, shall he not do it? When he speaks, shall he not make it good? See, when he says it, his healing power is in that word. My words are what? Spirit and they produce life. The word of God becomes more valuable to you. It becomes more inundated in your character where this is how I live. This is my life. So this is what the word of God should mean to you. Okay. Oh, verse 21 that men would praise the Lord for his goodness like we did this morning. Praise him for his goodness, his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. Can't thank you enough. We thank you. We offered up thanksgiving this morning. Well, it came out of Brother John's mouth, coming out your mouth too, if you was in praise and worship now, wasn't it? During what was lifting up Jesus? With rejoicing. See, with rejoicing. So see, it's not just that he sent his word and healed me. Okay, here Lee, check up on your spiritual life. You got any unforgiveness in that? You're seeking him for healing. He is the healer. You're not seeking the healing. You're seeking the healer. You make him extraordinarily pleasing. What are you going to do? Oh, baby, you heal. <laughs> I'm well pleased. <laughs> Okay, I was talking about the publication of the gospel produces belief in it. Come with me to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. I'm going to tell you, the way you find out whether you are carnal, carnal means that you are led by your five physical senses. What do you think about people when they minister? Because you're supposed to be thinking about Jesus and his word. 
Now, any time a crow, a raven, the Lord used the raven's mouth to feed one of his prophets. The Lord used anybody he want, whenever he want. It's God. Okay? Look what it says in verse 4. 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. For while one say, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe. If you study in the word of God and you fellowshipping with the Lord, whoever gets up here and minister, you'll know whether it's the word of God or not. I do not have anything in here to do with anybody's spiritual character. My job is to sow the seed. If the word of God tells me, if my life is anointed and Jesus Christ sent me, that when I minister the word, it's going to do its job. I believe that. So then I don't have to take none of y'all's character in consideration. I pray for you. I don't see nobody in here like I used to see him. Forget that. I got to see you from sitting right next door to Jesus. Only Jesus can teach me the way he wants me to be over this church. Nobody can teach me. Now, I know in the council with the board or whatever, I can receive direction. I know as we pray for Sister Lee on Wednesday and Friday, I'll be saying, thank you, Jesus, that I'll know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. But it's by the power of God. You shouldn't want to be nowhere where the power of God is not. I wouldn't. But look what he said. But ministers by whom you believe, even as God gave to every man. God appoints each man to his particular task. That's why I say I ain't called nobody. God does that. I have planted. Paul said, I have planted. And some of y'all, I'm planting the seed now. Some of y'all, I'm watering the seed. Some of y'all's spiritual ground is being taken care of, but your spiritual ground can't be all right in church, and then once you get outside, you let everything grow. You can't do that. You can't be one way in church and then go outside, and, and then your house be another way. You can't do that. So he said, I have planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. God gave the increase all while it was growing. If you plant something, from the seed, the blade, the ear, God gives the increase all the while it is growing. Okay? So then, neither is he that planted anything. It ain't me. It's not Brother Hester, it's not Sister Ruth, not John Yvette, it's not Latane. Neither he that water it, but God that give it the increase. God is the one that makes it grow. God is the one that makes it become great. So as I always tell you, always enter into the service. Don't sit back and become a spectator. If you sit back and become a spectator, you're going to become a what? A judge. And ain't got but one judge, and that's the righteous judge. So you enter in. Okay? If you don't want to enter in, sit in your car until it's old with it. You just want to hear Sister Lee preach, then come on in. So you won't be messing up everybody else. All right? Because I believe in the unity of the Holy Ghost. And only thoughts we want to have when we come in here and out there is the thoughts of the Lord Jesus Christ and our being made free. If he justified you, he placed you as righteous in a standing before God. And he expects us to live a righteous life. In view of the fact that we've been what? The object of the Holy Spirit in his work, the Holy Spirit's work of sanctification, we are to live by the energies that is supplied to us by the Holy Ghost. We're living out your own energy. That's why you're tired. <laughs> tired and can't do nothing. I'm so tired. You're living out your own energy. The Word of God produces everything you need. Everything. And now, since we have not yet been glorified, we wait for his coming. We wait for his coming what? with a purified life because faith does what purifies the heart. Those are all the mercies of God. Verse 8, he that planted and he that watered are one. In the sense that we have the same goal. Everybody gets here in the pulpit and ministers to you have one goal. And that's to lift up Jesus. Because you ain't going to get nothing unless you lift up Jesus. And every man, that means Brother Hester, Sister Lee, shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. When it's time to hand out reward. But if we all got the same aim... To lift up Jesus, but at the same time, the Lord still go judge us according to our labor. Now, why is that? Look in verse 10. According to the grace of God which is given. God gives more grace to some people. This is at God's discretion. 
and less grace to others. He puts more anointing on somebody's life for to do a job and less on others. That's God's discretion. But what you're going to do, you're going to listen to the word of God because you've been reading and studying and praying and worshiping the Lord at home. When you come here, you just fall right on in because we do the same thing we do at home. And like I said, what you do up here is dependent on what you did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, not Sunday. Now, what does God increase? He says, but God that give it the increase. What does God increase? According to the scriptures. Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> Lord, he said he was talking in the manner of forgiving. If your brother come against you 150 million times, you forgive him 100. Lord, this is a difficult to do. The same person doing the same thing over and over again, and you telling me to forgive him? You got to increase my faith. Well, he's actually saying, I, I need more strength. And what did the Lord say? If you had a grain of mustard seed, what you going to do with a grain of mustard seed? Plant it. The word of God must be what? Plant it. Got to be planted in your mind and in your heart. What you think about things will mess your believing up. You got to think according to the word. I don't care if something comes to your mind. And if you don't have the word, you better go get your concordance Bible and figure it out. Because, see, the word of God is not going to work for you unless you live by it. But a lot of people don't like to hear this. I was coming from the post office, and so I stopped. The man hands me a track. He's sitting in his car. Got all these signs about what Jesus done did. Ain't nothing wrong with that. He drives. Some people go read him. See, you can't get so that you got so much knowledge that you looking down at what somebody is doing. They doing what? They lifting up Jesus. And so he said, he got a 95-year-old woman, so he gives me a track. You got prayed for this morning because I asked the Lord to always put someone in my pathway that I can minister to. I told him about, you know, gave him the scenario about the rubbish on the inside and on the side of the road and the rubbish in our hearts and about the water came in and they got to take out everything and disinfect it. And I said, the Lord trying to take out everything and disinfect us with the Holy Spirit burning that shaft in us and all that. And by that time, he was listening to me. And then so I permit him to talk. And he said he passed our tracks. He'd be driving. And he'll pass by somebody. And he'll look at them. They'll read what he got. And if they're at the red light, he just gets out of his car and hit them a track. <laughs> That's courage, babe. That's boldness. <laughs> uh-huh. So you understand what I'm saying? And then I said, look at all this right. He said, oh, yes. I said, thank you, Jesus. You lift him up. See, he might have been called for that. Just say one little thing. And, and I said, well, at least we do know that if you wear a cross around your neck, what does that stand for? That doesn't stand for anything. To have a cross around your neck don't stand for nothing. You got to get on that cross. <laughs> It ain't said nobody wearing the cross. You got to crucify yourself. And I told him, I said, well, at least you got the message on the outside. I said, you're not like the people who put a little cross or something in their car thinking it's going to protect the car. You know, people do all kind of weird things with the cross and have stuff hanging up thinking it's going to protect them. You can't do nothing without the word. The word is the power that backs everything up with Jesus. The word. This is the only thing he's listening to is his word. So don't be trying to operate stuff outside of the word of God. Do not. I asked the Lord about Sean and his Lamborghini. He might have started at 14 years old, but is he still got the word and still thanking the Lord for it? Because the Lord said, yeah, Sean could have a Lamborghini, but what is he doing? Did he hold fast to it? I got to thinking. I don't know. JoJo wrote the computer that he wanted and pasted it up in Rosedale. And every time he went by his door, <laughs> he read it. And you know how long we was in Rosedale? I went to JoJo's office. JoJo had two screens, computer stuff. But see, look how many years. That's why he can do what he can do with computer. Look how many years, and he stuck with his. With God, ain't nothing impossible. Now he's a Lamborghini. Uh-huh, it's faith. It's pleasing him. When Solomon pleased him. God was pleased with Solomon, and Solomon got everything. He was pleased with David. And you notice even after David messed up with Bathsheba, God didn't change his covenant with David. So see, God is able. He can do what he likes to do. What I just got through ministering on 1 Corinthians 3 and 5, that was the publication of the gospel produces belief in it. And everybody who ministers here, they're bringing forth the gospel, 
in some form of fashion for us to enter in and believe it. It takes the power of God to do that and the Holy Spirit. When you listen to me and not more or less judge me, or whether it's Brother Hester or Sister Ruth or John or Yvette or whoever gets up here, even uh, Summer got up here to read. What did she read? The Word of God. What you judge anything is that your life. Is it lining up with the Word? That's the only thing you can judge. Amen. One more thing I want you to see. Let's go to Acts 13 and 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. Now, wax bold mean that they spoke. They proclaimed the word of God. They declared it and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you. Talking about the Jews. But see you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Whenever you do not get involved into the word of God, you are actually putting it away from you. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the word, where? Inside of. You say he bought you with a price. And you belong to him. But you can't just do this when you get in trouble. <laughs> this is all the time. You have to be like this. You have to live like this. <laughs> okay. Verse 47. For so has the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentile, that thou should it be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, see, we're talking about the message being published. Faith cometh by hearing. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of God and as many as were ordained. See, you got to be ordained to eternal life. Believe. So by y'all being here, that lets me know you've been ordained. We've been out here all this time, this long time. You've been ordained to eternal life. And you should never let nothing get between that. You and Jesus, nothing. Nobody. Not their acts either. Nothing. All right, come over here to 10 and 34 while we're in Acts. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feared him... And working righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent, see, sent unto the children of Israel during what? Preaching peace. See, that's a publication of the gospel. Now, who is he saying this to? He's saying that to Cornelius. Cornelius was a Roman centurion. And Jesus sent Peter to preach and proclaim the gospel to him. And after having heard it, what did they do? They got baptized in the Holy Ghost. The word got enough power in itself, more than enough, to bring itself to pass. All you got to do is feast upon it, act upon it. You got to know it, you got to receive it, and you got to trust it. Trust in it. If everybody going the same way the river flowing, and you going upstream, they tell you, you're going the wrong way. No, I'm not. I don't care how many it is arrayed. You got to know that you know that you know the direction that the Lord is traveling. Well, it's just me going up here. I guess I might as well. Well, uh, uh-uh, I ain't falling in with nobody but Jesus. Because what? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you will be fruitful in every good work, glorifying the Father in the Son, walking in supernatural, financial abundance.